So the Allied Health Rural Generalist Pathway is an integrated workforce, service and education strategy designed to improve the sustainability of multi-professional teams and support access to and the effectiveness of services for rural and remote consumers. The pathway is embedded in health services through workforce structures and job roles that support the development of allied health professionals as rural generalists in their relevant profession, work integrated and formal postgraduate training, and service models that fully utilise the scope and skills of rural generalist allied health professionals. This is the workforce and training pathway elements of the Allied Health Rural Generalist Pathway. As today's panel discussion relates primarily to the early career phases, this is the element of the pathway that I'll focus on in my discussion. The early career training phase of the pathway is divided into two stages, reflecting the evolving needs of allied health professionals as they progress their development as rural generalist practitioners. Stage one relates to graduates in their first two years of practice and stage two to clinicians who are on a development track, but who are beyond that new graduate period. Designated development focused rural generalist training positions are the foundation of early career stages. Embedded in these positions is mandatory profession specific supervision, which for graduates should, be, uh, should include a supervisor who is co-located, fully funded postgraduate training in rural generalist practice, and approximately four hours per week of development time to be used for study, workplace-based training, supervision and service development activities. There are currently nine professions that have access to a postgraduate program in rural generalist practice, dietetics and nutrition, occupational therapy, pharmacy, physiotherapy, podiatry, psychology, radiography, speech pathology and social work. For most professions, their postgraduate program is the two level rural generalist program offered by James Cook University. Trainees uh, who complete level two of this program graduate with a graduate diploma. So Ali will discuss the outcomes from the South Australian evaluation shortly. And I have presented in the previous concurrent session today on the evaluation of the JCU Rural Generalist Program. There are also evaluations in progress in Queensland and nationally examining workforce and service outcomes, including longitudinal tracking of trainees. But just to highlight progress of the development and implementation of the pathway in Queensland Health as an example. The chart shows the growth in early career rural generalist training positions since 2014. We have used a range of funding strategies as we've trialled and developed the pathway and mechanisms to enable it within rural services. There are currently more than 40 training positions implemented, planned or in recruitment in Queensland Health, Health Services. This means that more than um, one third of the total allied health, health practitioner level three workforce in rural areas is currently supported by training roles. We're also working with partners in primary care services on interagency collaborative support models for, rural, for the rural generalist pathway. And Robin Adams presented on an example of this in Northwestern Queensland in the previous concurrent session. And now just to unshare my screen to address your final part of your question, Kath, which related to whether the Allied Health Rural Generalist Pathway is an example of innovation or reform. There is certainly an argument that there is little in the pathway that is radical. And indeed, I think that is part of its strength. The fundamental components of the pathway are well-defined development focused positions, which provide adequate supervision and support, particularly for early career practitioners. Funding for accessible and relevant postgraduate and workplace based training that aligns to the job demands of practitioners in rural and remote areas. Opportunities to apply those skills through developing services that meet the needs of their communities and recognition and a clear pathway for allied health professionals to start and to grow their career in a rural or remote area. So at its core, the pathway reflects common sense and the experience of clinicians and service managers. 
If you support and invest in your rural health workforce and give them the opportunity to develop and apply their knowledge and expertise, the community and system will benefit. So this isn't rocket science. Um, these are points that have been reflected in workforce studies and, work and allied health advocacy platforms for many decades. However, I would argue that the Allied Health Rural Generalist Pathway represents a potential step change in how we understand, structure and fund the allied health workforce and facilitate service improvement in rural and remote areas. The extent to which this is considered a reform will depend on the degree to which health services, commissioners, educators, professions and clinicians integrate the pathway into their usual business of the system. The pathway identifies that rural generalist practice is a journey rather than a destination for an individual clinician. This reflects that rural and remote practice has always been and needs to be a training ground for allied health professionals. We need to grow our own. Rural practice provides a breadth of clinical experiences plus opportunities to accelerate development of problem solving, training skills, community engagement, service innovation uh, and other capabilities, including leadership. Without structured and resource support for early career clinicians and their managers and supervisors, um, these opportunities can be seen as challenges that then deter recruitment and lead to churn. The pathway can provide a mechanism to, for reform to establish the employment structures, workforce support and funding models that reflect what we know to be the needs of rural and remote services. We have progressed rapidly at a local and state level and also now nationally in recent years to build the pathway and position it as a valuable option for health service providers and funders who are facing the challenges of providing services in rural and remote communities. Thanks, Kath.